Now, the reason why we're raising these issues with you is because we feel at the moment that almost every group that gets started up by any person who learns about divine truth, a whole heap of very dark spirits move a lot of quite dark people to be attracted to the forum in order to attack it and pull it down to the normal condition of the world. That's, and you've got to expect that is going to happen, right? But what we notice is the response to that is very poor. Right? The response to that is there is, a, there is often a concern about free will and so then we allow all this terrible behaviour or we respond in anger or we allow other people to back up the people who have free will to be abusive. And, and these are all actions that we're taking that are completely out of harmony with what God would do in the same situation. Completely out of harmony. And, and of course then nobody wants to participate from a perspective of love on the forum. So you get all the people who were first initially attracted to the forum because they felt that it might be a great way to learn more about love and so forth. What do they do? They all shut up or leave. The majority of them finish up leaving or they shut up completely. You know, they shut down completely. They don't express anything because they know that every time they're going to express something, the people who are in a darker condition will just attack them anyway. Right? And this is the general thing that's been happening with most groups physical groups in people's homes and also most forums. Right? And I feel a lot of it is because the person who created the group or the forum isn't aware of their own responsibility. That's partly the problem. But the other part of the problem is that, is that many of us believe or have a false perception of what has been taught. So this whole thing about free will, many of us have a terrible perception of that. Well, you know, we constantly have issues where we're talking with parents about their children and how they let their children run around like without any form of restrictions whatsoever. Right? And the children are out destroying things, breaking things, yelling and screaming, interrupting everybody else, all out of harmony with love. And yet the parents go, oh, well, they've got free will. We've learned about free will, haven't we? <laughs> Maybe there's something in my soul that I've, got to, uh, that I've got to work through. Yeah, there is. You've got to work through the fact that you've got a completely false belief of free will. That's what, that's what you've got to work through, really. <laughs> right? There is certainly something you've got to work through in your soul level. Right? Um, what if you, like, if you privately approached the leader of the group and ask them if they would be interested in a perspective that, you know, an observation that you've had about their group. Would that be a loving thing to do? Of course. Or even, you could even express it publicly if you wanted to. But at the end of the day, if, if you're unloving or they, or they feel you are, don't be surprised if you get removed. And of course, this is not, remember I haven't said this is not my feelings of whether you have been. This is their feeling because they have the responsibility for what they created. So if they happen to create the group and they are in a first fear condition, then of course their ideas of love are going to be first fear conditioned ideas of love. If they have a desire to grow, if they have a desire to be self-reflective, most of the time they might listen to different people. But what, what we notice more than often than not is going on is that there is not that at all occurring, but rather there is this allowance of attack. And this is one problem that many of us have. We allow the attack of other people without doing anything about it. We allow other people to attack other people in our own homes and in our own forums that we created. So, so we're not even setting up some kind of framework of what are the principles involved in this forum. Now, when Cornelius set up, well, he didn't set up, remember, he didn't set up the group. The group emailed, the group talked to the other, emailed the whole thing, things out. And the very first response I had was, um, who's the most loving person in your group? Because <laughs> that, that, like, if I set up a group and I attracted someone more loving than me, oh, I'd be so happy about that. <laughs> I'd be going, you sure you don't want to run this group? <laughs> but the, this is, seems to be a great opportunity. I would love to learn from you. I would love to know what's going on. I'd really like to know. 
And if the person's willing to share their time, even mentoring me, like even if they don't want to come along the group, I'd say, I'd say, look, can you just mentor me then? Like, can I share some things with you about what I'm finding from the group? And you, you give me some help with that. I'd, I'd at least do that. If the person didn't want to leave the group, I'd sort of treat them as my uh, silent, silent uh, mentor on the side if, that's, if they didn't want to have a more public exposure. And the reason why is because I'd recognise their condition of love and I'd go, ah, this is very, very good. I can learn a lot from this person who has a better condition of love than myself and they can mentor me a bit in terms of... And if they're willing, you know, it just depends on their willingness, of course. So if they're not willing, then I understand. But, but if they're willing, that would be fantastic. And most people who are in a better condition of love than ourselves generally, if they have the time are willing to assist us at least in some way. That's reality. Right? So what I would do is I'd ask them, what, what, what do I do here? What do I do there? But I wouldn't become reliant on them because then I'd also be out of harmony, love myself. I'd be entering in an addiction with them. So I'd just want to get feedback from them and, and try to work through things myself right to conclusion, but if I still can't resolve it because I don't understand, then I'd go to them right? and, and allow them to... You know, provide correction. But if they were in my group and they were willing to lead it, man, you're the leader now. Does that make sense? And this is what I proposed to the healing group. And of course I said, you, all of you need to think about, so there were 16 or 18 people in the group initially, I said, all you need to think about is who is the most loving person here? And they all looked at each other, felt each other a bit, decided that Corny was the most loving person there. And um, without Corny, I don't even think he was present at the time. And, uh, and so, so then the request was, is he willing? Is he willing to take some leadership of that group or not? That's the only other question. If he wasn't, then there's this other option, isn't there? Of, is he willing to mentor the person who is leading? Is he willing to help that person at least? Right? And so this gives you the beautiful ability to be able to check against somebody as well with regard to what's loving, what isn't loving and so forth. So that would be number one to, to, do, to try. If you've set up the group, you are responsible. Remember from God's perspective, what happens in this group now, you are culpable for to a degree. So if one person in the group attacks another person in the group and you don't say anything about the unloving behaviour, who's culpable? You are. Besides the person who attacked the other, and sure, the person who's being attacked has an attraction, obviously, and the person who's attacking is, has an attraction, and so do you. But perhaps the attraction is for you to learn to stand up for truth for a change instead of just letting all these bad things go on around you all the time. Make sense? So that's very important. So, Robin? Yes. Now, we haven't got to the stage yet where we're talking about groups where there's more than one, have we? But, okay. So, yeah. So in our scenario, well, um, one person actually started it, but that was because the email, a lot of people were emailing each other, and we decided it was getting too bulky. So one person... Yeah, emails know, back and forth become very unwieldy, to, yeah. obviously. So um, one person actually did the work of making, starting the Facebook, but then immediately assigned four people to administer it. And All right, so, um, so can I first make some comments about being invited to administer? The, now the collective condition of those four administers, those four ministering people, determines the condition of the group, doesn't it? So it's a bit more complicated now, isn't it? It's not just my condition determining whatever happens, but three others as well as me determining what happens. Now that means that there, there's probably going to need to be some consensus between the group. But is that how things are organised in the spirit world? No. No, they're not. How are they organised in the spirit world? And many of you know, Michael, if we're coming around. Again, it'll be the most loving person. Good. And so he might have some assistance to help him do more mundane sort of tasks, but in the end, the buck's got to stop with someone who's in a good condition of love. Does that make sense? That's the primary thing. So what the four people who were asked to do administering would do is sit together or, or have a meeting together, even if it's via internet, via Skype or whatever, 
and they could sit down together, okay, who of us do we feel? And, it, and we wouldn't be going on like, oh, I want to leave this group and be damned, you know. Like, we'd be going on a, a really like, honest analysis of ourselves and the other person and what we feel from them. Who of us do we feel is in the best condition of love to administer this group? As the, what you call, you could call them the system administrator or the, in the case of a home, you could call it the group's primary leader, if you like. And then they have some assistants who help them do that task. And they might even have a mentor who's not even involved in the group who helps them, who they can go to and get advice from. That would also be helpful, wouldn't it? Like having someone that they could just email occasionally say, look, this thing happened in the group. Do you have any comments to offer us leaders about this particular group? Yeah. So setting, there's no harm in setting up the group. The harm is created through our not honouring some basic principles about condition, isn't it? That's where the harm comes. And we're going to, and, and let's say there's nobody in our group in a, first sphere, in a second sphere condition, let's say. But even in the hells, you know that there's thousands of levels, isn't there? There's the darkest of the hells where there's just rage and anger and but terrible things going on. And the highest of the first sphere is like Summerland. And, and at least we want our group to be Summerland, <laughs> wouldn't we? As a minimum sort of a requirement. Now, do you think in Summerland, any rageful, angry spirit from the hills can just go in there and rape and pillage a whole children's block in Summerland? Do you think that can happen? Of course it can't happen, because they can't even get there. So why do we allow such people into our forums, where there's lots of God's children, all trying to be more sensitive and trying to be more loving and trying to be more considerate and trying to be... You know, grow in love and humility. Why do we allow these people who just want to attack, 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 abuse, pull down, denigrate? Why do we allow those people? And we're not talking here about having a different opinion, because the reality is anybody can come into our forum and have a different opinion. There, there are celestial spirits who have totally the opposite opinions to each other. Did you know that? Totally the opposite opinions. There's a good case in the pageant messages about it, where one guy comes and he says, this is my opinion about what's going to happen in the future, and another guy comes and says, I don't believe that's going to happen, and they're both celestial spirits. They're allowed to have different opinions. What they can't have is an unloving perspective or motivation. That's what prevents them from being in brighter conditions, if we have an unloving perspective or motivation. Does that make sense? So different opinions are fine. I'm not saying don't kick out any, anybody with a different opinion. You want people with lots of opinions. But it's how we express this opinion in love that matters. It's how we act towards our brothers and sisters that matter, no matter who they are in the world, whether they're, whether they're in a forum we created or even something going on in the world. Like, if... Myself and Mary notice somebody treating another person really badly in our seminar. We ask that person to leave, even though it had nothing to do with us. Does that make sense? Because we want to maintain, as much as we're able to, given what we can see going on, as much as we're able to, we want to maintain an environment where everybody feels free to learn about love and become more loving and, and, and more accepting of other people's opinions and more truth, truthful with each other, but also more humble with each other and not somebody who's going to attack and abuse us and abuse somebody else. We don't want that. They, they can go away for a while, look at it all on the net, and then when they've worked through their issue of love, come back. Or if they want some help from somebody else who's in a better condition, that's fantastic. But they just can't come to a, our seminar and just project, project, project unloving things to everyone else and ourselves. They can't do that. That's, that's not loving to ourselves or other people. Who, and remember that in our case, a seminar is our creation. So we've got responsibility for it. Yeah? 